financial planning for big moments. Five strategies for marriage, parenthood, and more. Did you know that the choices you make today can literally shape your financial future for years to come? Whether you're planning a wedding, expecting a baby, buying a home, or looking forward to retirement, all of these life milestones come with its own set of financial implications. But without proper financial planning, a significant portion of your money could slip right through your fingers. Now we know financial planning does sound like a fancy term that only Wall Street folks would use, right? But in reality, it's something that we all do, often without even realizing it. Every time you save up for that new phone or decide to cook at home instead of eating out to save some bucks, you're essentially doing financial planning. Let's start with one of the most exciting life events, getting married. You found the one, the love of your life, your partner in crime, congratulations. But before you walk down the aisle and say, I do, there's something you need to do. Talk about money. Yes, we know it's not as romantic as planning your honeymoon or well, picking out wedding rings. But trust us, having a solid financial plan can make your journey together a lot smoother. The first step is to have an open and honest conversation about your finances. Might feel a little uncomfortable, especially if you've been keeping your finances separate. But come on, marriage is a partnership, and that includes your finances. So start by discussing your financial histories. Do you have any debts? What about savings? Do you have a good credit score? These are all things that can affect your financial future as a couple. And while you're at it, don't forget to discuss your financial habits. Are you a saver or a spender? Do you like to budget? Or do you prefer to go with the flow? Understanding each other's financial habits can help you create a financial plan that works for both of you. Next. It's time to set some clear financial goals. Do you want to buy a house? Start a family? I mean, travel the world? Whatever your goals are, write them down. Then create a plan like a budget or a savings plan to achieve them. When you're single, you only have to worry about your own expenses. But when you're married, you have to consider your partner's expenses as well. That's why it is important to create a joint budget all right, so you've tied the knot and you're thinking about the next big step. Becoming parents. Parenthood is indeed one of the most rewarding experiences in life. But it also comes with a whole new set of financial responsibilities. From diapers to college tuition, the cost can really add up quickly. However, with a little planning, you can handle parenthood like a pro. According to a report, the average cost of raising a child from birth to age 17 is a whopping $233,610. And that's not even including the cost of college. Now, before you start panicking, remember that this is just an average. The actual cost can vary widely depending on factors like where you live, your lifestyle, and of course, your personal choices. The first step is to adjust your budget, like cutting back on non-essential expenses or finding ways to increase your income. Next, it's time to start a college fund. With the cost of college tuition rising faster than inflation, you've got to start saving early. One popular option is a 529 plan, which offers tax advantages for education savings. But there are other options as well, like UGMA and UTMA, custodial accounts, and even Roth IRAs. Do your research and choose the option that best fits your needs. And please, don't forget to update your estate plan. This includes naming a guardian for your child in your will, setting up a trust, and updating your beneficiaries on retirement accounts and insurance policies. Let's move on to the next big step in life, buying a home. Home ownership is a dream come true for many, but it's also a major financial commitment. 
According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the median sales price of new houses sold in the United States in 2023 was $373,200. I mean, that's a lot of money. And that's just the sales price. There are also closing costs, which typically range from 2% to 5% of the home's purchase price. We can also count the ongoing costs, like mortgage payments, property taxes, homeowners insurance, and maintenance. The first step is to save for a down payment. You know, the money you pay up front when you buy a home. The more money you put down, the smaller your mortgage will be. A common rule of thumb is to aim for a down payment of at least 20% of the home's purchase price. Next, it's time to get pre-approved for a mortgage. This is when a lender reviews your financial information and tells you how much they're willing to lend you. Getting pre-approved can give you a pretty good idea of how much home you can actually afford and show sellers that you're a serious buyer. Once you've found your dream home and your offer has just been accepted, it's time to finalize your mortgage by choosing a type of mortgage, like a fixed rate or an adjustable rate mortgage, a loan term, like 15 years or 30 years, and an interest rate. Moving, the next big step is planning for education. This might come way before in your life, like even before you marry, but it's worth talking about. Whether it's for you, your spouse, or your child, education is one of the best investments you can make. And nowadays, sadly, it's also a costly one. According to the College Board, the average cost of tuition and fees for the 2023-2024 school year was $37,650 at private colleges, $10,560 for state residents at public colleges, and $27,020 for out-of-state students at state schools. Remember, right now, we're not even including the cost of books, supplies, and living expenses. One of the most common ways to save for an education is through a 529 plan. Like we mentioned earlier, these plans offer tax advantages for education savings, and the funds can be used for a wide range of education-related expenses, from tuition and fees to books and supplies. Plus, many states offer additional tax benefits for residents who contribute to their state's 529 plan. Apart from a 529 plan, there are also Coverdell Education Savings Accounts, which offer tax-free growth and tax-free withdrawals for qualified education expenses. And they also give scholarships, grants, which can significantly reduce the cost of education. When it comes to paying for education, loans are often a last resort. But if you do need to borrow, make sure to explore all your options. Federal student loans often offer lower interest rates and more flexible repayment options than private loans. Keep in mind that not all degrees are created equal, and the earning potential can vary widely depending on the field of study. So, before you invest in an education, make sure it's likely to pay off in the long run. Okay, so we've talked about a bunch of big moments in life but there's still one more that's super important. Retirement planning. We know it might seem far off, but it's never too early to start thinking about it. Actually, the earlier you start, the better. According to a report by Fidelity Investments, a couple retiring in 2024 can expect to spend $285,000 on healthcare alone during their retirement years. Well, forget about the cost of living expenses like housing, food, and entertainment. You can start to save for retirement through a 401k plan. These plans, offered by many employers, allow you to save and invest a portion of your paycheck before taxes are taken out. Plus, many employers will match a portion of your contributions, which is like getting free money. There are also individual retirement accounts, IRAs which offer tax advantages for retirement savings. And yeah, don't forget about Social Security, which can provide a base of income in retirement. 
When it comes to saving for retirement, one key principle is the power of compounding. This is the process where the returns on your investments earn their own returns over time. In simple words, interest on interest. Much like a snowball rolling down a hill, growing bigger and bigger as it goes. Lastly, consider the lifestyle you want to lead in retirement. Do you want to travel the world? Start a second career. Volunteer in your community. Whatever your goals are, make sure your financial plan supports them. Well, that's it for today. So what are your financial planning strategies? Do you have any tips or experiences you'd like to share? Drop your comments below. Before you go, don't forget to check out our recent video on the psychology of spending. Conquer impulse buys and control your cash. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.